You would like to read scientific papers fast and effectively, but you keep facing one of these challenges. The papers are hard to understand and only about 10% of the information sticks. You're not sure what to look for in the papers to gather input for your own research paper. Or you have difficulty prioritizing which papers you should even read. Then be my guest for the next 10 minutes or so. As an early career researcher, I deal with scientific papers every day. When I'm not writing one myself, I'm reading one. But not just any paper. I have a system. If you read a scientific paper from beginning to end, it's a rather suboptimal use of your time. Especially if you want to produce your own scientific work. My system gives you three steps to follow on how to read scientific papers from now on. So that you can really make the most of your time and build knowledge pragmatically. And now without further ado, welcome to Tribe. Many thanks to Scribber for sponsoring this video. More about Scribber later. Every year more than 2.5 million scientific papers are published worldwide. Two and a half million. There's no time to read them all. That's why it's so important to approach the task with a plan. You need to know exactly how to find the right scientific papers that are relevant to you and your work. In addition, you need the right reading technique so that you don't have to struggle through a paper for hours just to extract a single definition. And finally, you need a system to collect, process and organize your knowledge so that you don't forget everything a day later. When you are working on your own research project, you will have a wealth of text passages, quotes and results at your fingertips that you can use for your own writing. Let's go. Step 1. Selecting relevant papers. First of all, you need to accept that your time is limited and so is the number of papers you can read. If you are working on your thesis or any other paper, you only have a couple of weeks or months of which no more than one third should be spent on your literature review. Let's say you're writing an undergraduate thesis and have the capacity to read 30 papers in addition to a handful of books that you also need to read. First create a reading list in the form of a table. Conduct your literature search and collect all papers that appear relevant at first glance. Then read all the abstracts and decide which papers make it to the top 30 reading list based on the abstracts. This step is also important in systematic literature reviews. Now you can start reading your top 30 reading list. The remaining papers will be neglected. Step 2. The right reading technique to read papers fast. A suboptimal approach would be to start with the first paper and work through it from beginning to end. First approach the paper with the paper screening. Read the introduction, methods chapter and conclusion. Why? These parts of a scientific paper are what I call meta-building blocks. They are not purely content-based sections, but report one level higher or above the contents. By reading these three sections, you will obtain the following information. The context, motivation and research problem of the paper. Then what method was used. Also the main findings and contributions as well as a summary of the most important results. If you now realize that you want to get more out of this paper, selectively decide to read additional chapters. For definitions, read the lit review. For interest in theory, read the theoretical background. To learn more about the scientific debate about a topic, read the discussion. For methodological questions and inspiration, read the results. Different papers can be useful in very different ways. You need to define the goal you have when reading a paper. This is called selective reading. You must allow yourself to skip large parts that do not contribute to you reaching your goal. In a science podcast I regularly listen to, an author was recently a guest who had mathematically solved a theoretical problem in one of his papers. Since the reviewers wanted these elaborate calculations in the results section, he was now unsure whether this would deter many readers. He himself then called on readers to simply skip the results section because it does not necessarily contribute to understanding the paper. So here you can see, even authors of papers want you to skip certain parts instead of losing you as a reader somewhere in the middle. 
Now, before we continue with step three, let me just say a few words about the sponsor of this video, Scribba. If you are looking for a proofreading service or plagiarism check for your scientific work, I can wholeheartedly recommend the team at Scribba. Just have a look at scribba.com and send me a short email to info at for an exclusive coupon code. Step three, create your own excerpt system. Creating such a system is an important step in effectively managing and organizing the information you gather from reading. The basic goals of paper reading are to understand the context, motivation, problem, the method, and the main results of the paper. But you also want to have the contents ready to be cited or paraphrased for your own paper. To achieve this, you should create an entry in your excerpt document for each of the goals you have while reading papers. Excerpts are extracts from scientific texts that you can copy for direct quotes and paraphrase for indirect quotes. You can also add your own thoughts, notes and interpretations to these extracts. There are different ways to organize those documents. You can organize them within your reference management software. This has the advantage of having them readily available when you manage your references. Or you can create a system of individual tables and save them in a folder structure, for example in Google Drive. Alternatively, you can create a huge Excel sheet with separate pages for each paper, so you have everything at your fingertips in one file. Each system has its advantages and disadvantages, but the important thing is that you have a system that works for you. It also depends on your working style and the software tools you use. Some people prefer to collect everything on paper and use pens and markers. This may not be as efficient, but it can be a good way to consolidate the information you gather if this is the way you'd like to work. Bonus tip. Do not read papers on computer screens. Since we do most of our work on our computer, we are also very likely to read papers on it. If we believe the author Marianne Wolfe, who was also a professor for education at the University of California, we should immediately stop doing this. In her work, she explains that the way we read on screens is different from reading on paper or Kindle. By the way, reading on iPads counts as a computer screen. On those blue light screens, our brain tends to skim read, because that is what we do when we consume content on those devices. Scientists found that while reading on computer screens, our eyes follow Z patterns, jumping from one word to another while skipping large parts of the content. If you want to read papers effectively and retain the information, this is not good. Reading on paper, in contrast, gives your brain the signal to focus on the text and avoid skim reading. So either you print your reading list on paper or, which would be a more sustainable option, get a large e-reader such as a Kindle Scribe or a Remarkable 2. That makes reading papers much more fun.